Clever. Those people from Kia's press office. They thought this new kit on the block might be a brilliant, handsome driver. Everybody can review performance cars. So before we go there, let's see how he does with a small electric crossover first. Well played, Kia. Well played. I am way out of my octane-drenched comfort zone here, but I shall prevail. It's a bit like asking Usain Bolt to review a pair of slippers. But then, even the world's fastest man needs to get comfortable every now and then. So how will the world's slowest, fast driver get along with the e-Nero? Think of this less as a review then, and more as a real-world experiment to see whether somebody with fists of ham can live with an electric car. This inconspicuous little crossover looks nothing as mad as the recently introduced EV6. But then, the Nero was launched before Kia went through the rebrand and made the logo sharper as well as the design of their upcoming cars. This is the fully spec style version, which comes with the bigger battery and extra kit like bigger infotainment screen, ventilated seats, sunroof, etc. I do like these accents which are supposed to advertise the fact that this is a green car and which are all the rage with manufacturers right now. So this is not a performance car then? But how do you review not performance cars? Maybe look for fake exhaust tips? Right. Boot space though. Boot space is important I reckon. There is some. Aren't these supposed to have a fruit or a frunk? Let's check that one out. What? <laughs> Steering wheel, check. Pedals, check. Drive selector, check. Start button, check. Everything normal at this point, but maybe too normal. I thought an EV would come with futuristic gadgets. I thought there would be warp drive. I thought there would be a cloaking device. I thought the seats would be made out of the wool of retired Wookiees. I thought there would be a cradle for your laser crystal, but none of that. But there's also an upside to this because it means Operating this vehicle is intuitive, and I don't need to go to EV camp for six months, I think. It is nice in here. I like this floating center console bit. Okay, I am useless at this interior stuff. I have spent lots of nights in bunkers and always thought, it's all right this. You get in, you push the start button, and it sounds like a smartphone is booting up. You put the rotary drive selector into D and you set off with a subtle hum to let people around the car know that unlike a smartphone, an e-Nero can drive off without being put into a trouser pocket first. About the soundtrack, here is a one million dollar idea I'm sure nobody else has thought of. Make the sound configurable, offer sound packs, so for one Swiss franc you can make your e-Nero sound like a TIE fighter. Or how about Goku's flying Nimbus? The instrument cluster is also rather normal. The two biggest pieces of information on display are the speed I am going and for how many more kilometers I can go. I like that. And at a WLTP certified 450 kilometers, I can go for quite some time. 
Another fun bit is the readout that tells me how my driving style is. So currently it says it is 92% economical, 8% normal, and 0% dynamic. Am I getting a fever? The car does have a sport mode which, as you'd expect, sharpens the throttle input and the steering. But at no point did I feel like going to the Nautch life and smashing lap records. And not just because I don't have the talent to do so. Quite the opposite, actually. The car sets you in the mood for a rather quaint drive. With its lowest of low-down torque, you pull away effortlessly, you get up to speed and then you just waft. The ride is good, the seats do their part, although I wish there was a bit more bolstering. But again, this car doesn't have any sporting ambitions. Unsurprisingly, you can drive the car with one pedal. But via pedal shifters, you can choose how much region braking you want. Actually, it is almost like downshifting with a naturally aspirated engine. The Enero is not spectacular to look at. It isn't terribly exciting to drive. And yet, I enjoyed my week with the dinky little Kia. It did all I asked of it without attitude and it never tried to baffle me by being unnecessarily clever. Car manufacturers these days are so obsessed with reinventing the car or how we interact with it that while the cars get better at everything else, they often get worse at being cars. Not this one though. I remember how we used to make fun of the Koreans. But the fact of the matter is they have pretty much caught up. But all this comes at a price, which is the price. A smidge under 50,000 Swiss francs for this fully equipped car is not exactly a bargain and puts it in striking distance of European rivals. But it won't be a walkover for them. Not anymore. Me? I am too much of a petrolhead to ignore the fact that you can get a serious performance car for that money. But then, not everybody is wired like me. I am in the back of the e -Nero. Um. I found this, I ran out of battery and I found this charger in the supermarket parking lot. Um, I'm sitting in the back because as you can see sunlight is coming in, I was feeling hot in the front, I was starting to dehydrate. I have water for a few more hours, um, I'm not sure how much longer this will take. If I don't make it and somebody finds this, um, please let my family know that it was a dignified death. <laughs>